Starting off this countdown, we have the wrong leg. A couple of years ago, a man named Bill ended up crashing his car into a tree after suffering from a seizure. As a result, both of his legs were crushed. Now it turns out that his right leg could still be saved, but his left leg needed to be amputated. But somehow there was a mix up and someone mislabeled the films. So the surgeon amputated Bill's right leg and not the left. As a result of the mix up and the surgeon's error, Bill lost both of his legs. I can't even believe that, like I am shocked at this one, but it gets worse. Moving on to number 9, we have the breast implants gone wrong. Now I heard the story last year and it immediately broke my heart. This is the story of Emma Lynn Nugent from Colorado. The 19 year old was very insecure and decided she wanted to get breast implants. She even saved up her own money to get this procedure done. Little did she know how it would end for her. After being given anesthesia, she was left unmonitored for 15 minutes. During those 15 minutes, she went into cardiac arrest. When the doctor finally noticed, he performed CPR and was able to stabilize her. A few minutes later, she slipped into another cardiac arrest. But they never called an ambulance until five hours later. By that time, Emma Lynn was neurologically unresponsive. From then on, she was bedridden in a hospital. She could no longer speak walk, eat, or take care of herself. A year later, she passed away. She was a promising young woman with a bright future ahead of her, but all of that was taken away from her because of the doctor's negligence and refusal to call for proper medical attention. In our 8th spot today, we got the sponge. Imagine undergoing a surgery only for the doctor to later realize he left medical instruments inside of you. I'd freak out, like what? So a couple years ago, Air Force Major Erica Parks noticed some unusual swelling in her stomach. She had just given birth, but several weeks later, her belly continued to grow. After a CT scan of her abdomen, it was revealed that two gauze sponges were left inside of her. They actually were entangled in her intestines. Thankfully, they caught this sooner than later. But still! But it took the doctor six hours to remove the sponges and all the infected tissue. That is messed up. Like, how do you misplace that and then leave it in someone? And now here's a fact to horrify you. In the United States alone, there are 4,500 to 6,000 cases per year that involve sponges and other surgical instruments getting left inside of patients. Moving on to number seven, we have the brain surgeries. When you're dealing with brain surgeries, honestly, you gotta be super careful because one wrong move and it's over. Well today, let's take a look at three errors that all took place in the same hospital. So it took place at Rhode Island Hospital. This hospital is known as the best hospital of the state, as well as a great placement hospital for students at Brown University. So the first incident involved a third year resident. They didn't mark the side of the brain that was going to be operated on. But I believe that that got solved before the person underwent the surgery, no worries. But the second time is even worse. An experienced doctor didn't mark which side of the head he was going to operate on. He said that he believed that he would just remember. Well, turns out that he didn't remember and the patient died a week later. That's not all. In the third incident, both a neurosurgeon and the nurse at the hospital ended up operating on the wrong side of another man's brain. Uh, this is insane. Like, I feel like that's something you, you double check and then you triple check, you know? I feel like you should do that before any surgery. In our sixth spot today, we have Blake Fought. This is a very tragic case of a medical mistake that costs someone their life. So in 2007, Blake Fott was sent to the hospital for an ongoing illness that he was battling. While there, he was given liquids through an IV line that was placed through his neck. When he was all better, a nurse was sent to him to remove the IV line from his neck. But apparently, this nurse had zero experience or training to do this, but she didn't tell anyone. And she didn't follow proper protocols, and when she removed the line, Blake started to gasp for air. The nurse, instead of getting help, just kept telling him to calm down. Well, basically, because she didn't remove it properly, a bubble of air entered Blake's blood vessels and traveled to his heart. He ended up dying from asphyxiation. This could have been avoided had the nurse told someone that she wasn't comfortable in removing the line. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Eric Hedgepith. In July of 1987, Eric and his mom went to a hospital in Virginia to have his tonsils removed. But somehow, during the procedure, something went wrong and Eric stopped breathing and then his heart stopped. Now, news articles didn't really explain what caused this to happen or how, but it resulted in Eric slipping into a coma. He remained in this coma for two weeks. When he woke up, he was permanently paralyzed. He spent eight months in a cerebral palsy center. Now he needs someone to be by his side 24-7 to care for him. In our fourth spot today, we have the case of Becky Anderson. 
In 2012, Becky Anderson went to Central Washington Hospital to get some polyps removed from her larynx. So she was put under anesthesia and a breathing tube was inserted into her mouth. Now for this procedure, I believe they used like a laser type device to zap off the polyps. Well, while doing so, the laser hit the breathing tube, causing it to rupture and burst into flames. After that, she was unable to speak or breathe on her own. She had to undergo a number of other procedures to correct the damage that was caused to her throat. In fact, her injuries were so terrible that she was stuck in the hospital confined to her bed for three months. In the end, she sued the hospital and the company that made the breathing tube. She won $30 million for the lawsuit against the hospital. Coming in at number three, we had the deadly stroke. A couple of years ago, a six-year-old woman named Claire went to the ER complaining about bad neck pain and a bad headache. Well, the ER physician, Brian Bledsoe, took an x-ray of her neck and found that nothing was wrong. So he just assumed that she had slept on it weirdly or that she had pulled a neck muscle. So he gave her some pain medication and discharged her. Little did he know that those were the warning signs of a stroke. The next morning, he received a call from an ambulance transporting Claire who had gone into cardiac arrest. She had died shortly after. To this day, Brian blames himself for Claire's death. He created a post online saying that if only he had listened more carefully and didn't rush Claire, he might have been able to save her and save her family from heartbreak. Moving on to number two, we have the medication mix up. In March of 2011, a 51-year-old man from Oregon underwent a cardiac bypass surgery. After the surgery, the surgeon ordered him to be given 150 milligrams of amiodarone to help stabilize his heart rhythm. The anesthesiologist administered three vials of this medication. He thought that the vial would contain 50 milligrams each. But because of an error at the hospital's pharmacy, each vial actually contained 900 milligrams. Sadly, the man overdosed on it and suffered permanent brain damage. As a result, he now needs constant care for the rest of his life. He received $12.2 million in damages. In our number one spot today, we have Hang Miyoku. The case of Hang Miyoku is a very tragic one. She was a former Korean model and singer that became obsessed with her looks and plastic surgery. She constantly wanted soft, young skin. As a result, she underwent a number of procedures involving getting silicone injected in her face. After a while, doctors refused to continue on with the procedures because they noticed that her face was becoming noticeably large. But that didn't stop her. She decided to take matters into her own hands and got silicone from the black market and injected the entire bottle into her face. When that wasn't enough, she proceeded to inject her face with cooking oil. This caused her face to become permanently swollen and scarred. She then underwent 10 operations to try and reverse what she had done to herself. The surgeons removed 60 grams of silicone, oil, and other foreign substances from her face and 200 milligrams from her neck. Sadly, they weren't able to reverse the swelling and scarring. Miyoku greatly regrets what she did to herself and said that she wishes for her old face back. Starting off this countdown, we have the organs removed by mistake. Back in 2017, 36 year old Alicia Cook Moore sadly lost her mom to breast and ovarian cancer. After that, she decided to undergo genetic testing to see if she had the genes for the same types of cancers. Her doctor pushed for her to get this surgery done, saying that she had a really high chance at developing the same cancer that took her mother's life. So she had her breasts, uterus, and ovaries removed as a preventative measure. A few weeks later, after her surgery, she visited another doctor. This doctor informed her that the genetic testing came back negative, meaning there was no need for her to get all those surgeries done in the first place. It was all for nothing. In the end, the surgeries actually caused a lot of health complications and caused a number of follow-up surgeries. And again, this was all for nothing. In our ninth spot, we have the glove and compresses. Back in 2017, a 48 year old woman underwent a hysterectomy to get her uterus removed. When she woke up from the procedure, she had terrible pains in her stomach and was unable to urinate. The doctor was all like, ah, you're fine, here's some pain meds. Three days after the operation, this woman started having contractions. And while going to the bathroom, she ended up delivering a surgical glove and five compresses. Yes, five. These were left inside of her during the surgery. That must have been horrifying. And apparently it was because this woman had to go to therapy for the psychological trauma that it caused her. In our eighth spot, we have getting embalmed alive. In 2018, a 28 year old Russian woman needed surgery to remove some ovarian cysts. This is a routine procedure. It should have went pretty smoothly. Unfortunately, during the procedure, instead of getting saline solution, she was injected with formalin, which contains formaldehyde, which is what they use to embalm corpses. 
When the doctor realized his mistake, it was too late. They tried to wash out her abdominal cavity, but the formaldehyde had already poisoned her. Over the course of a few weeks, her organs started to fail. Shortly after, she passed away. Moving on to number seven, we have the wrong sperm. Just from the title, you guys already know what's going down here. Basically, back in the early 2000s, Thomas and Nancy Andrews wanted to have a baby. Unfortunately, they were having trouble conceiving, so they went to a fertility clinic in New York. That's where Nancy was inseminated and successfully became pregnant. However, after giving birth to their child, they realized that their skin was way darker than theirs. The doctor was like, oh, you know, that's normal, your baby's skin will get lighter. Obviously, this wasn't the case, and they had a DNA test done. Turns out, Thomas was not the biological father, and they injected someone else's sperm into her. In the end, they sued the clinic. Uh, not sure what happened after that, but wow. Coming in at number six, we have Wide Awake. In 2006, a man named Sherman Sizemore underwent surgery and was given the wrong dosage type of anesthesia. Now, there are two kinds of anesthesia that people typically receive during surgery. One is a paralytic, which stops movement, and the other is inhalation anesthesia to prevent pain, and that's when you're sedated. He was given both. The paralytic anesthesia was properly administered, but the other was not. So he was awake for half an hour. He couldn't move or speak, but he could feel the pain of the procedure. Finally, the staff noticed and gave him more anesthesia and finished the surgery. But imagine that, you're just laying there, feeling everything, and you can't scream for help. Well, it turns out that this experience really traumatized him. After the surgery, people said he would behave strangely. He hated being alone, he suffered from insomnia, and when he did sleep, it was all vivid nightmares. It got to the point where he couldn't take it anymore, and sadly, he took his own life. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the markings. In 2000, a woman named Leanna Geds underwent a C-section to give birth to her first child. But for some reason, her doctor, Alan Zarkin, thought it would be a good idea or a funny idea to carve his initials into her abdomen. And so that's what he did. After the surgery, Leanna held up a mirror to her stomach and saw the doctor's initials. She was horrified. In an interview, she said that she felt like a branded animal. She continued on saying, and I quote, it was supposed to be one of the most exciting times in my life, but it was a nightmare. Dr. Zarkin was immediately suspended after this incident. In the end, Leanna sued the hospital and the doctor and settled for $1.75 million. Now, this isn't really a medical mistake, but I mean, the dude did mess up big time, even though he knew what he was doing. In our fourth spot, we have the wrong side of the brain. When you're undergoing a serious procedure like one involving the brain, you would hope that the doctor would triple check to make sure that everything goes smoothly, right? Well, in this case, surgeons at Rhode Island Hospital in 2007 operated on the wrong side of a patient's brain. But guess what? This didn't happen just once. It didn't happen just twice. No, 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 no. It happened three freaking times on separate occasions. Sadly, the last time it took the patient's life. The neurologist drilled into the right side of the patient's skull when he was having bleeding on the left side. And the scans clearly showed the left side. Sadly, the man passed away from this mistake. In our third spot, we have the wrong lung. This next patient came in with a punctured lung. The doctor then had to collapse the lung in order to fix it. But the doctor had been on a 36 hour shift and was exhausted. In the end, he collapsed the wrong lung and the patient passed away. Sadly, the doctor was so traumatized and felt so guilty that he ended up taking his own life after being fired. In our second spot, we have the urine. I hope you guys aren't eating right now because this next story is it's quite disgusting, not gonna lie. So this story comes from registered nurse Reddit user Nay32. A couple of years ago, he was looking after a man with liver failure. He came in to check on the man and brought him his pills. To then wash the pills down, he grabbed a cup from his bedside table. The man popped the pills in his mouth and took a big gulp from the cup. That's when he realized that the cup had his urine in it. I told you, it's disgusting. That must have pissed him off. Pun intended. But seriously, that's disgusting. But at least it was his own urine and not someone else's. I don't know. Sorry, guys. TMI. And in our number one spot today, we have the screwdriver in the back. 
In 2006, a man named Arturo Iterald needed to get a titanium surgical rod in his spine. But during his surgery, his surgeon, Robert Ricketson, apparently couldn't find the rods that they used for this procedure. So instead, he decided to take a screwdriver that was in the room with him, remove the handle, and insert that into the dude's back. What the heck? And of course this went terribly wrong, like what else would you expect? Within a few days, the screwdriver broke. In his back. In his spine. This led to a series of complications and worsened his spine. Arturo then had to undergo a number of other surgeries to fix this whole mess. Sadly, the man's life was shortened and he passed within two years. His estate filed a malpractice case against the surgeon and ended up with $5.6 million. But no amount of money will bring Arturo's life back. Mm -hmm.